Hi, this is Terry from Fabric Junction in Sturgis, South Dakota. And today I'd like to introduce you to our six and a half inch blocks. These blocks I have been posting on our blog. I've been doing it the last couple of months. So you can get all the cutting instructions on our blog site. And our goal is to make a quilt when we're done. So these are the two six and a half inch squares that I made that will go into the quilt. But if you don't want to do a quilt, what I've done is I've created the same block as a pot holder. Now you can adapt this block to make whatever you want because a six and a half inch is really nice because you could do, put four of them together to create a nice pillow. You know, about 12 of them with sashing and borders will do a, a cute baby blanket or whatever you decide you would like to do. So with today's block being an album star, it consists of several flying geese, which I've made a couple of them there, and then the center is three strips. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew my three strips together and my other flying geese, so that for those of you that are unfamiliar with the flying geese, you'll have an idea of of the tech one of the techniques that I use. So to start off, I center and since I can do the other side before I have to press I will do that. And then I'm going to press it. Now one of the things I thought of as I was making this is I thought this creates a great area to put a name. So if you were making these pot holders to give to a friend, maybe you'd want to put their name right across here before you finish it or not. I'm going to have Christopher put some words in there like love after my potholders are done because he's got the nice fancy quilting machine. Mine is a great sewing machine. So now to do the geese, most of the time I'll mark a center line but because these are so small I know I can eyeball it but definitely mark the center line until you're comfortable with this technique. But due to the size of the um, seam, like I said, I generally can eyeball my point to point. I can line up pretty straight. Trim the extra off. Press it. And then we'll do the other side. Again, get it started right on the point. And then just aim for the other point. Go. But like I said, if you're more comfortable, go ahead and mark it. That, that's okay. I don't know how many flying geese I've made, but I'm sure it is probably in the thousands by now. So there's my geese. Now I have it set out to put it together like we normally do um, when we're doing a nine patch. Very simple. I start with the left is on the bottom. I flip over and I sew and I do it again and again. I keep them hooked together and I do my other side. Now that I'm not going to do right this moment because I'd like to move on. We'll pretend that I did sew it together. Now what I did for the pot holders specifically, because six and a half is a little bit small. And as you can see on mine, this one I added just a simple border. I just cut an extra, um, let's say the sides are one and a half by six and a half, and the longer ones are one and a half by eight and a half. And I added that to build it up to about an eight, eight and a half inch pot holder. Makes it a nice size 
for the hand. When I did my pot holder, I also did just a real simple stitch in the ditch to show off the star. What's in my pot holder, and it varies from time to time, I have a back that's cut much bigger, along with a batting, and I only use one, and Inselbright. After I found Inselbright, I quit using just batting. When I used just batting, I needed like three layers to give me the insulation that I needed. But now with the Inselbright, I've done some with just Inselbright, and then I do a lot of them with the two mediums. Then check out our video on how to bind your pot holder. I cut a two and a quarter or two and a half inch strip, salvage to salvage, and I start in the corner. And I am a machine binder, so I actually start it on the back, go around, and then I flip it over, sew it, and make my loop. But check out our video on how to bind your pot holder if that's what you have decided that you would like to make. So with that, I hope you enjoy one of our first blogs. Check out our blog from Fabric Junction. Check out our website and the blog and Facebook and everything else that's out there in the social media for you. And again, thank you for watching us here at Fabric Junction.